Hello, my name is Moving Cat, and welcome to my guide for the 2023 winter event. Sorry for being a little bit late, but better late than never. So in this video, I will go through the rewards from this event and give you my thoughts on them. I will go through the mechanics as well as strategies on how to best play the event. Now, if you skip ahead to a specific section, you will find the timestamp in the description. So with that out of the way, let me start, and I will be doing this by using my written guide, which you can find in the description. So let's start with the main building, the Winter Wonderland Pyramid. This building is 4x4, it has 12 levels, and it does not require a road connection, which is quite interesting, if you ask me. Um, Let's jump right at that thing to the level 10 to the final building, the Majestic Winter Wonderland Pyramid. It gives up to 19 forge points, which is above one per tile. Quite nice, if you ask me. Up to 48 goods, which is uh, quite decent. But I think most importantly, probably the main thing people are looking at is the unit. It gives 12 units, which is quite a lot for the size of the building. Uh, now, it also gives fragments, just briefly, the level 11 and, and 10 buildings, they give fragments for the silver and golden upgrade kits. Uh, it takes one month each, if you don't pick up any fragments from the event, but as I will go over later on, you will probably be able to get most of the fragments you need during the actual event for these two kits. So, in addition to those, uh, they also give fragments for the Winter Wonder Retreat Selection Kit, which is a selection kit with two new buildings that I'll go over in a moment down here. Uh, at the, the final level, you get three of these per day. You need 100 fragments, so you can get one roughly every month, every 33.3 days. So, in addition to that, the building also gives attack. It gives up to 29% attack for attacking army, uh, which is, it's decent, it's quite good. Uh, but uh, compared to some of the recent buildings, it's not quite, uh, quite the way up in there. But definitely very nice, especially for the size. You also get some attack for your defending army. You get two, uh, up to two combined, or up to two per, up to two percent per tile. There we go. Now, this building also sees the new introduction of Guild Battlegrounds and Guild Expedition exclusive attack boosts. So, in Guild Battlegrounds, you have up to 8% attack for attacking army, which, if you ask me, is a very low number. I'm, not, I'm quite surprised that this isn't a lot higher, to be honest, but um, it is what it is. Uh, you also get up to 12% attack for defending army in Guild Expedition. This uh, as well I think is quite low. Uh, I would have thought that the uh, exclusive boosts here would be higher, because, well, when they are exclusive you can afford to make them higher, because they only work for a certain section of the game. So, I don't know, I find that a little bit interesting. Anyways, overall I think this is a very good building. It's quite a small one. It doesn't require a road, so it should be quite easy to fit into your city. Uh, it does give population uh, at the final uh, two levels, not the uh, level 10, uh, but level 11 and 12 it gives population, which is quite nice as well. We, we have seen and we will see uh, more uh, event buildings requiring population. Uh, so, definitely nice. So overall, I would definitely build it. It might not be quite up there with uh, some of the recent buildings, uh, but uh, I guess especially if you, you want these units, uh, it might even be the, up there with the best ones recently. So, I would place the building. Let's talk about the two buildings you can get from the Winter Wonder Retreat Selection Kit. We have the... Winter Holiday Spa and the Winter Snow Globe. So the Holiday Spa, it is 3 by 2 it does require a road, and it also requires both population and happiness. Um, of course happiness, not really required, but if you want to keep enthusiasm, you do need some happiness. Uh, but yeah, you do need population, so something worth keeping in mind. Uh, it gives uh, quite a decent amount of previous age goods, especially considering the size, up to 42, which is 5 per tile. 
Uh, it gives quite a nice amount of both attack and defense for attacking army. A combined 3.71 at the highest uh, age, that's definitely not bad at all. Um, it also gives some attack for defending army, which um, if, if you play guild expedition is quite nice. Uh, and it also has a random chance of either giving a renovation kit uh, fragment or one-up kit fragment. Uh, in total, you need 40 days on average per renovation kit, full renovation kit, uh, and 24 days per full, full one-up kit. Then we have the uh, Winter Snow Globe. Uh, it is 2x3, so same size, just road with 90 degrees. Uh, this doesn't require a road. Uh, not sure if I meant, did I say this doesn't require? It does, requ this requires a road. The snow globe doesn't require a road. Um, it also requires both population and happiness. Uh, slightly less happiness, but more, uh, slightly less population, but more happiness. Uh, it gives forge points instead of the goods. Uh, it, and it has attack and defense for defending army instead of attacking, uh, but it does still have attack for attacking army. So up to 18%, which is three per tile for attacking army. That's definitely very nice. Uh, and then for the defending army, that's what, uh, five? Uh, around, yeah, around four, sorry, <laughs> per tile uh, combined. Um, this one also has a chance of giving one-up kit and renovation kit fragments. They are flipped compared to here. Uh, so here you need 40 days per one-up kit and 24 days per renovation kit. Uh, so overall, I think I prefer the uh, first one here simply because of the attack boosts. Um, of course, the forge points uh, are better, I think, than the uh, than the goods. Uh, but overall, I think I prefer the first one. That said, though, um, I'm not sure if I would really go for these. Uh, I, I might place them. I probably will place them if I get them. Uh, but uh, eventually, uh, as I, I, I imagine going forward, we will see a lot more buildings requiring population. So eventually, as you run out of population, these might be some of the first ones to go. Uh, but uh, for now, at least, if you have the space and the population, I would definitely build these. Uh, moving on, we have two buildings that uh, are more or less diamond only buildings. We have a gold league building and a calendar building. And both of these you practically do need diamonds to, uh, to complete. So, first of all, we have the sweet gingerbread cottage, which you can get from landing in the gold league. It is 3x3, three three. it does not require a road connection. It gives a lot of watch points, 3.44 per tile. That's uh, quite a lot. It gives 27 goods and previous age goods three per tile, both of these, really nice. Uh, and none of these depend on your age. It gives 20 fragments for the Winter Wonderland Pyramid Golden Selection Kit, which is quite interesting. So this time around, um, instead of giving, or instead of getting golden uh, and silver upgrade kits, you have golden and silver selection kits. So in the selection kits, in the golden one, you can choose between the level one building, the upgrade, the silver upgrade, and the golden upgrade. And later on, uh, in the silver selection kit, uh, you get all of these except the golden upgrade. So you can choose uh, which one you want, which is quite interesting. So for a full building, you need 180 of these fragments, which means you get a full main building, a Winter Wonderland Pyramid, at golden level, at the final level, in 90 days which is definitely very nice. In addition to that, you get 45% attack for attacking army. That is five per tile, definitely very nice. Uh, you also get a lot of attack and defense for your defending army. Uh, that's what 14 and a half per tile uh, combined. So definitely a very good building, but as I mentioned, it is uh, gold league only. And as I will go over later on, I'm not sure if this is the best event to spend the diamonds on. But it is there if you are interested. Uh, then we have the spectacular showtime here from the calendar. Uh, this one you also most likely will need diamonds for, but not that much. So this might be more realistic to get. Uh, this one is also 3x3. Again, no road required. Um, and actually, it's very similar to the... 
to hit to the gingerbread cottage uh, it gives a uh, slightly more forge points which is nice four per tile which is insane uh, it gives slightly less goods and previous eight goods it also gives you gives you fragments for the winter wonderland but the silver structure kit and also only 10 compared to 20 for the other building uh, so a worse kit and you do need uh, twice as long more or less to get it so i have 165 days here and that is get it to level 11 because that's the most you can with this uh, uh, selection kit here um, you also get attack for attacking army attack for defending army and defense for defending army uh, the uh, attack value is one lower these numbers are a bit random if you ask me <laughs> the uh, attack for defending army is a bit higher uh, but the defense for defending army is a bit lower so overall a uh, slightly worse version of the sweet gingerbread cottage so that's the two that are diamond only in practice and then we have one that is diamond only we have the uh, elephies nog shop which is only available in the elves workshop which i'll talk about a little bit more in a moment it has four levels uh, i only included the level four version here uh, but at level four it requires both population and happiness it gives between 13 and 15 forge points depending on age which is uh, 1.43 per tile at the max age it gives up to 42 goods which is quite nice and it gives three fragments for the winter wonderland pyramid golden selection kit so that is the same selection kit that uh, this one gave uh, however you only get three per day so from this alone you need 600 days to get a full winter wonderland pyramid at the golden level um, you also get attack for attacking army you get th up to 30 which is 2.86 per tile definitely nice and you also get attack for defending army so personally i'm actually not that impressed by this building um, the sets are of course very nice but they're nothing amazing compared to what we've seen recently uh, it also requires population and combining all of these things with the fact that you do need to get it in the elves workshop and you need four upgrades to get it here i don't think this is worth going for uh, i wouldn't personally i wouldn't go for the elves workshop uh, regardless but even if you do um i don't know i don't really see the value in this building compared to the price you have to p have to spend for it and considering all the other good buildings we are getting recently and that we will be getting in the future i imagine so personally i'm not a big fan of this and i probably wouldn't focus on it anyways uh, moving on we also have new levels for last year's buildings uh, we have a golden uh, level for the uh, main building from last year uh, both for the Gatibo Candy and the Ted's Truck, both of those are getting a golden uh, level. Uh, but you get them from yes, a selection kit, so uh, you don't need to yeah, you get the selection kit so you can choose which one you want to upgrade. And then the Nutcracker Guardhouse has received an additional level. Uh, this is not a golden level, it's just a regular level, um, and the way you get it uh, is from the Katibo Candy and Ted's Truck level 12. So the golden levels of these buildings here, in addition to increasing the stats, also replaces the Nutcracker Guardhouse fragments with a Nutcracker Guardhouse Selection Kit fragment. And in this selection kit, you can choose between the level 1 building and the upgrade for the guardhouse. Um, as for the upgraded guardhouse, it's just increased stats, or I say just, it's quite a big increase. Uh, so definitely a very nice building, worth getting. Uh, but yeah, if you want more details, you can check the Phantom uh, Wiki to to check the uh, yeah to check the <laughs> details. Anyways, moving on to grand prizes. So as usual, we have a set of unique rewards and then looping rewards. Uh, I will not go through them all, uh, but just briefly of interest. To get the main building fully leveled, you need to, or to get it to level ten, you need to land here at 240 that will give you 10 levels uh, to get enough fragments for the silver upgrade you need to land here at 380 so there you get 50 here you get 50 here and then 50 here 
and to get uh, the golden or the golden fragments you need you need to land here at 500 that is 50 uh, golden fragments here 50 here and 50 here uh, and we'll go more into this uh, later on but uh, just briefly you will definitely be able to get the uh, level, level 10 building uh, you will likely be able to get all the silver upgrade fragments and with enough incidents you might even get enough uh, fragments for the golden upgrade from the event itself now uh, the golden uh, selection kit as i mentioned for the last year's main building is available here at 460 uh, this one might be possible with a bit of luck and some incidents but i'll go over that in more detail later on anyways in terms of daily specials uh, you can get the nutcracker guardhouse that's definitely a good building from last year you can also get the chuckle lottery i still don't know how to pronounce that uh, which is a really good all-round building uh, we have the harvest farm which is uh, still or the fall set still the best set around although i know not a lot of people appreciate the sets uh, but uh, it's still available uh, and then two more all-round good buildings the heroes tavern and mountain reserve uh, there's a bunch of other rewards as well uh, you can even get the spring set if you want uh, but uh, perhaps i will uh, but yeah overall i think these are probably the best options you can check out a full list on the fandom if you are interested uh, we have leagues as i mentioned uh, the top league here you have the new building uh, in, all, in the four top leagues you have the uh, epic kit where you can choose between all the previous uh, winter event buildings um, here we have an upgrade for the main building here we have the silver uh, selection kit as i mentioned uh, so here we can choose between the level one building the upgrade or the silver uh, upgrade and here you have the golden selection kit we can choose between all the different uh, upgrades and uh, uh, golden upgrades and so on and then you also have the uh, chocolatory uh, golden selection kit as i mentioned where you can choose the level, level one building upgrade um, and the golden upgrade for either the katibo candy or ted's chalk all right let's move on and talk about event mechanics so tldr there's not really a lot of changes from last year so if you want to skip it to the strategies by all means do that i uh, will still briefly go through it so in terms of currency uh, we get more or less twice the amount of stars compared to last year uh, however the amount of progress you get has been lowered last year it was between one and three progress uh, per uh, present you opened this time it's between one and two uh, but still we have twice the amount of stars but the amount of progress is not twice as uh, little so overall you do get more progress this time around compared to last year uh, and uh, the present uh, cost are, is unchanged so with these extra stars you will be able to open more presents to get more rewards so overall a uh, nice balancing change if you ask me uh, diamond costs they remain unchanged now the basics of the minigame nothing has really changed there you have 18 presents that you can open when you press start here they will be shuffled and you can find them at random uh, now the different types uh, you have either 12 or 13 kind of random rewards which are forge points goods uh, blueprints supplies coins and so on uh, you have the show two this one here which reveals two random rewards the next time you can choose to either open these or ignore them you have a double payout this one here which doubles the reward in the next uh, present you open you have shuffle which resets the entire board gives you a new set of rewards uh, to, to pick from uh, you also get 10 stars in return uh, then you have a reward uh, here that gives 14 stars uh, a couple of free, free stars nothing to complain about and then the calendar key so you might remember the uh, summer event uh, which we used this mechanic uh, there you only had a 50 percent chance of getting the calendar key on each board and that is true now as well so as you can see in this example there is no key available in the uh, rewards to choose from uh, so in this board you will not be able to get the key so if you want to go for the calendar you should always check before you start playing if the key is actually available 
but more on that in a moment. Um, and then lastly, you have the daily special. So here you have next stage goods. You can see the next stage goods there. All right, so that's the different types uh, of uh, presents. Um, the yeah, the, the only real time you have any impact on what you choose is if you are able to pick the or get the show to. And if you do pick the show to, uh, here I have a kind of a list of my recommendations. So if there is a specific random reward you want, uh, say you wanted, um, I don't know, <laughs> say you wanted uh, a unit or something, uh, you could uh, choose that by all means. Um, if you get the double payout as one of the two options, uh, I recommend picking it for a chance to double the next reward. Uh, it's, yeah, I think it is worth going for, even if you don't end up getting anything, uh, you might. And if you do get the daily special, for example, it's very nice to get the double payout. Now, if you find the shuffle in one of those two, um, I would only pick it after you have found the daily special, uh, assuming you do want the daily special. Uh, or if you're going for keys, I would then pick the shuffle right after you have found the keys. This way, you get what you want from the board, and then you can move on as quickly as possible without wasting any more stars. Uh, if you get the 14 stars among those two, I would definitely choose that. If you get the calendar key, uh, I would actually cho choose that regardless of if you want to go for the calendar or not. Uh, because after you have picked the first uh, key on, on a given day, any subsequent keys will instead give uh, a key fragment or a key piece uh, plus 10 stars. Uh, so the sooner you pick this up, the more stars you get uh, from the rest of the uh, stars you spend uh, that day. So it's definitely worth picking up. Uh, now, if you get the daily special, uh, of course, if you want the daily special, then definitely pick that up. If you don't want it, then ignore it. But uh, I think in most cases, you should only spend when the daily special is available. Anyways, um, now, if there is a double payout, visible and another reward you want, uh, then you should definitely choose the double payout first and then the other reward. Uh, that's probably quite uh, quite uh, obvious. Uh, and if you get both a shuffle and a daily special or a key, if you pick both of those, then of course pick the uh, daily special um, uh, first. Um, another thing, um, uh, if you pick the day or if you get both of these, and you haven't picked up the double payout yet, then try to go through their presents and until you get the double payout and then go for the daily special. Uh, because in this scenario, there's no chance of hitting the shuffle by opening uh, the presents you can't see. Uh, so yeah, definitely worth going around to get the double payout if you ask me. All right, let's talk about the calendar. Um, it's basically the same as last year. Each day when you get the daily key, you are able to unlock that day's spot in the calendar. Uh, you can get some rewards, uh, various rewards. And if you get uh, them, if you get all of them, uh, you get the new building, the Santa Spectacular Showtime. Uh, you get a golden selection kit for the main building. You get a golden selection kit for the chocolate tree. Uh, you get a lot of forge wines and goods. You get a portrait. And interestingly, you get seven days of Forge Plus, uh, which, yeah, I, to be honest, I don't really know what you get from Forge Plus these days, but uh, it's interesting nonetheless. Uh, so this, I think, is quite a nice uh, set of rewards, so potentially worth uh, going for. Uh, now, I'll go over the numbers in a little bit, but TLDR... Uh, you will, are very unlikely to get all the keys you need from the event itself, uh, but you might not. You might end up not too far away. Perhaps only missing five, perhaps ten keys, uh, and to get uh, keys uh, to get keys from diamonds, it is quote unquote only five hundred diamonds per key. So if you are missing five keys, for example, that is two thousand five hundred diamonds. Uh, and for these rewards, I don't know, 2,500 diamonds might be worth it for you. So, uh, it's something you have to consider for yourself. Uh, now, in addition to getting keys from the minigame, you can also get them from daily uh, challenges here. So one of the options will give you some key parts. Uh, on average, uh, you get, uh, what is it, 
3, I think it was. Yeah, 2.3 key pieces per day, which means that across the event, you will get just below 15 full keys. So let's say 14 full keys on average. So almost half you can get from the daily challenges. So if you are able to do those each day, that can definitely cut down on the amount of diamonds you need to spend to uh, complete the calendar. If you don't do the daily challenges, then you will have to spend a lot more diamonds to open uh, all the remaining keys you need. All right, uh, then we finally have the Elves Workshop. Uh, this is pretty much the same as last year, uh, no real changes. Whenever you get either uh, the 2x, the show 2, uh, the shuffle, uh, or shuffle, yeah, uh, you get a reward here. Um, and when you get it, you can choose between two of these rewards here. Uh, if you don't want either of these, you can choose to spend the diamonds to shuffle. If you do, uh, the reward will be replaced with one of the available rewards. So for example, here you can see the Nog Shop building. Uh, then we choose it, it is added to your uh, stash of uh, presents. And then to claim them, you do need to spend 3000 diamonds. Uh, and to claim, or when you claim, you get all the uh, presents that you, or rewards here that you have uh, gotten, that you've opened. Uh, so you only want to spend these diamonds when you have filled up the entire thing. Um, and like last year, uh, the last entry here uh, is doubled, so you get two of these. Uh, so yeah, uh, personally, I've never been a fan of this mechanic, the uh, Santa's, what was it called? Reindeer Slay initially, and then Elves Workshop, so I've never taken part in it. Um, if you get uh, good buildings, then it might be worth it, but I think for most players, you should simply just ignore this, I think. But each to their own, if you want to go for it, by all means, do so. All right, let's move into strategies. Uh, so basically there are two different strategies. You can focus on going for daily specials, and this means that you save up all your stars and spend them on uh, one day towards the end of the event. If it's one day, two days, doesn't really matter, but save them up for as few days as possible and then spend all your stars. Uh, the other way is to go for the calendar, and here you should spend the key, um, spend stars on a given day until you find the key. Um, now, however, you don't need to find the key every day uh, because there is the daily challenges. So if you pick up uh, 14, 15 keys from that, that means that you can skip uh, this amount of days, uh, 14, 15 days, whatever, that, where you don't need to pick up the daily key from the minigame. And that means that if you get to a day and the board doesn't have a key, like in the example I showed above, in that scenario, you can skip that day and wait until the next day to see if you can find uh, the key in the first board there. And um, also, if the first board has a key and you start playing it, but you hit the shuffle before you find the key and the next board doesn't have the key, you can skip it that day as well. Up until the amount of days you are able to get from daily challenges, so let's say 14, 15 days. Um, if you play like this, uh, you will be able to get more keys than if you don't, but uh, you're un still unlikely to get all uh, the keys you need to get the calendar fully, uh, uh, yeah, to, <laughs> to complete the calendar. Uh, now, what is the downside of going for the calendar? Well, the downside is that you get fewer stars to spend overall. Uh, because when you go for the daily specials, there are two things that means you get more stars back from the minigame itself. Uh, first of all, when you go for daily specials, uh, the first key of a day will give you a key, but any subsequent keys uh, will give you a key fragment plus 10 stars. So if you spend everything on one day, you'll get more stars in return from the minigame this way. Uh, additionally, uh, when you go for the calendar, you should stop playing on a given day right after you have found the key. When you have found the key, you should stop and then at midnight the game will reset itself. This means that if you go for the calendar, you will also hit fewer shuffles in total. And each shuffle also gives you 10 stars in return. So these two things combined means that going for daily specials, uh, you will have more stars to spend which means you get more grand prize progress and also more daily specials. Now in terms of numbers, uh, when going for daily specials, 
you get back around 32 stars for every 100 stars you spend. Um, that means that, well, basically for every 100 stars, stars you start with, you get to spend 132. Now, with the calendar strategy, you only get back 23 stars on average instead, uh, which, yeah, it is a little bit lower. Uh, that means that with the daily special focus, you get or you need around five, just above five stars per progress. And with the calendar focus, you need around 5.4 stars per progress. So perhaps not that big of a deal. And as you'll see later on, both of these strategies will easily get the main building to level 10 at least. Uh, but uh, but yeah, you do get uh, fewer, uh, fewer rewards going for the calendar focus. Uh, now, someone has mentioned kind of a hybrid here, uh, where you can go for the calendar strategy, uh, but instead of uh, stopping after you find a key, you stop after you have found the shuffle. Um, I don't know if I think this is worth it. Uh, you will uh, get some more stars back, uh, but you will also lose out on uh, quite a few keys by doing this. Uh, so I think I would choose either or of these. If you want to go for the calendar, then I would go for the calendar uh, all out. And But if not, just go for the daily specials. I think that's my recommendation. Um, now, I've updated my simulator from last year. Uh, this, well, uh, it will simulate how much progress, etc. you will get with some values here. So number of starting stars is how much you start with. Uh, required progress, it is how much you need for your goal. Uh, in this case, uh, I've put 240 to get the level 10 Winter Wonderland Pyramid. Uh, here you have the total keys you need for the calendar, it's 32. Here you have how many you expect to get from daily challenges, so let's say 14. And with this, here we have some numbers, so yeah, so you're doing this. Stars actually spent with these 2,200 starting stars is around 2,900. So you see, you do get to spend a decent amount more than you actually start with. Um, in total here, the average progress around 434. So around here. Anyways, uh, you can play around with this if you want. Uh, let's talk a little bit about, first of all, how many daily specials can we expect. Um, in total, you shouldn't really expect that many, at least compared to recent events. Um, if you go for keys, then perhaps 15, 16 uh, on average. If you go for daily specials, around 18, 19 on average. Uh, but there's definitely quite a big spread here. So if you are lucky, you will get more. Unluckily, you will get less and so on. Uh, so overall, not, probably not the best event to go for uh, daily specials. Um, I think the most imp uh, interesting part here is that you can see the difference here between daily specials and going for the calendar, going for keys. Uh, with the free amount of stars, it's around three perhaps on average uh, daily specials that you're missing out on. Uh, now, can you get the Winter Wonderland Pyramid fully leveled here? The answer is, uh, well, it yeah, you, you can, <laughs> you definitely can. Uh, so you are guaranteed to get 240, that's no problem at all. Here you can see the results of my simulations. Uh, you can easily get over 400 uh, if you focus on daily uh, specials. If you focus on calendar, you might not get to 400. You might, you might if you are lucky. Uh, but still, you will definitely get the 240 that you need to get the level 10 building. Now, as I mentioned, you need 380 uh, to get all the silver upgrade fragments. As you can see uh, with the daily special focus, uh, that's yeah, that's uh, more or less guaranteed. Uh, I would say pretty much guaranteed that you will be able to get there. Um, if you go for the calendar, you might get there, but uh, you might also not. Uh, it depends. But if you pick up some from incidents, I think you're still likely to get the, all the silver upgrades you need if you go for the calendar. And then finally, uh, golden upgrade fragments. Here you need to land at 500 progress and you are unlikely to get this for free. Now, if you do pick up enough from incidents, let's say 300 or so from incidents, um, you might actually be able to do this. Uh, it's not definitely not guaranteed. Uh, as you can see here, you might need uh, 60, 70 additional progress. So 300 perhaps, 400. 
uh, stars, additional stars. It's not impossible to get that from incidents, but uh, I've also heard that you did, we didn't get a lot on beta. So you might get enough, you might not, but, but still, uh, you will likely get at least 100, I think. Uh, so that's only 50 missing uh, fragments, which is only 10 days uh, with level 11 buildings. So, so yeah, definitely easy to get the window, Winter Wonderland Pyramid fully leveled. Now, should you go for the calendar? Um, my recommendation is, let me actually just go up here. So my recommendation is to, um, if you're willing to spend the diamonds, then I think it might actually be worth going for the calendar. Uh, as I said, you are likely to uh, miss a decent amount. Uh, you will get probably around 13 keys on average, but that's on average. You might get be unlucky and get a lot less. You might actually have a small chance of getting enough keys, uh, but I think you're likely to be missing between five and 10 keys if you go for the calendar. Uh, but as I said, that's only 2,500, 5,000 diamonds, and for the rewards you can get, I think that might be worth it. So if you are willing to spend diamonds, then I don't know, I think you might actually uh, be tempting to go for the calendar. Uh, because as I showed here, you, you will easily get all the grand prize progress you need, even if you don't get all the golden or silver object uh, fragments you need. You, can, you will quickly get them from the main building itself once built. So, I don't know. Uh, and also the amount of daily specials, it's only around three or so that you're missing out on if you go for the calendar. So, all of these things combined, I think the I think it might be worth it to go for and to get these rewards there. Uh, because uh, I think these are probably worth more than the additional fragments and the two or three additional uh, daily specials. So, I don't know. If you are willing to spend diamonds, I would probably go for the calendar. Um, if you don't want to spend diamonds, then, at, then definitely don't go for the calendar. Uh, if you don't want to spend diamonds, go for the daily special uh, daily special strategy. Uh, and also, if you don't want to bother of going for the calendar, after all, this assumes you are able and willing to do the daily challenge every day. It's a lot of work for a month, but if you do that anyways, uh, then not a big deal. So if you're willing to put in the work and spend the diamonds, go for the calendar. If not, go for daily specials. Uh, let's end the video by quickly talking about diamond spending costs. Uh, now for the second building, um, actually I think for 50 progress is a little bit, a uh, little bit high perhaps for uh, the free currency. Uh, perhaps if you include um, incidents, you can get 450 progress. Uh, but if you do, then you're only missing uh, 110 progress for the uh, for the uh, uh, second building, uh, which <clears throat> is only around 550 stars or around 6,000 diamonds. So for the second building, not really that much, that many diamonds. So might be worth it. Might be worth it if you if you want to. And of course, if you do go for a second building, you will have some more stars to spend in order to get some more keys for the calendar. You might not have to spend anything there to get the missing keys, who knows. Uh, so if you want to spend some diamonds, I think it might be worth it to spend six, 7,000 diamonds uh, to get the second building and to get the calendar fully leveled. Uh, beyond that, for each additional building, it's probably around 19,000, uh, 20,000, something like that. You need 360 progress per uh, uh, <laughs> per additional building. So yeah, I think that's more or less what I want to go over. Again, I apologize for being a little bit late. Uh, I've been quite busy recently and also uh, I was a little bit caught off guard with the release date of the event last Friday. Uh, if you didn't know, that was the same day it ended on beta. Usually we have some time, so I expected it to start perhaps today or tomorrow, uh, but it didn't. So, uh, so yeah, apologies for being a little bit late. It is what it is. Uh, also, before I go, quickly want to mention kind of my plans going forward. Uh, in around two weeks' time, I'm going home for Christmas. I'll be away for two and a half weeks. So until then, I will probably have a beta recap or two. Uh, and also, I expect the wildlife events to start on beta by then. 
Uh, so I'll make a video on that. But uh, after that, it'll probably be two, two and a half weeks uh, without any videos again. And then starting in January, I should be able to upload a little bit more frequently. Uh, I want to go back to weekly beta recaps, for example. It's haven't been a lot of these those recently. But yeah, when I get back, uh, I definitely want to start those back up and do those more frequently because uh, that's something I find quite fun uh, to, to dig through the beta stuff and talk about that. So expect more of that going forward. Anyways, I think that is it for this video. Again, you can find the written guide in the description. Now, before I end, let me thank my Patreons for their support. I would like to thank Homestar, Kim Kelly, Roll of the Eight, Dan Sumanat, Shanti, Dark Matter, Mylia, Zero K, THX, Hugo Count von Count, Drew the Genuist, Susan Weiss, Rocco, Spike from No Remorse, Atomic, Flavius the Avenger, Agler, Whiskey Meister, Lauren Sir, Hoss, Hanikta Klaber, Alaril, Mike, Opti the Obsessed, Ruth, Karen, Dennis, Flavius Paris, Lusarius, Stampe, Podger, Music 77, Niklas, Mike So, Michael, and Early Morning. Thanks a lot for your support. Thanks for watching, take care, and I will see you in the future. Bye-bye.